Hi there and welcome to this video. This is the first in a new series that I'm starting where I'm just going to focus on much shorter videos but just focusing on sort of key tips and techniques that people have requested that I create videos for. And if you've got any requests or any problems that you have yourself then please feel free to get in touch and I will look at uh, creating a short video like this to help you out. So what we're going to look at today is basically a few different approaches to adding another mesh to the same rig or basically copying the skin weights from one model to another on the same rig and later on I'm also going to show you a technique for copying skin weights from one rig to another rig when they're both completely different sizes or proportions. So it just gives you a head start when it comes to painting skin weights. So you can see before me we have a, a skinned character. Now this was rigged but what I've done is I've just removed the rig for now just so we can focus purely on the skeleton and the model and the skin weights. You know, so we're not messing about with controls and things like that. Also, you may have been given a file uh, as an FBX, which you've imported in, which doesn't have the rig on. Now this, like I say, this has been skinned. So we've got all this, the, the skinning information on this. So you may have been working on a character and you've spent all this time, you know, painting the weights, getting everything to work just as you want it to. So as you can see, we've got the, the fingers all skinned. You know, they all work. The rest of the body is. We've even got these roll joints in here as well. So they're all set up. We've also got a facial rig in with this as well. And that's all been done. All the skin weights have been done. We've even got these extra joints here so that you can control the lips. So all this sort of stuff has been added in extra and you've spent lots of time, you know, painting all these. And then somebody comes along and says, oh, okay, we've got a different version of this character, but we've got a version that's closed. So you end up with something like this. Now this guy isn't skinned. So the problem we have now is we've done all that work on the other mesh. Now we've got to update it to this one. But now we've got to think about, oh, I've got to repaint all those weights. Well, you don't really have to. And I know this is like a really quick tip and most of you are probably aware of it. But in order to get the weighting information from the original mesh to this one, we can just copy the skin weights. And like I said, just stick with me here because this is quite the, the most basic part of this video. There are other tips uh, coming soon. So all we do is we just select the root, select the mesh and go to skin bind skin, as you already know. So we're just going to make sure it's skin to the joint hierarchy, uh, maximum influences. I'm just going to leave that at four because this is a game model and click apply. So now this has basic weighting applied and you can see as we move this around, you know, this area here doesn't deform correctly. We've got odd things happening over here, but yeah, this is just the basic weights. If we can select the jaw, so that doesn't work at all. So what we can do is we can, we can use the weights from the main model and all we do is we select the main model then we select the new model and we go to change that to rigging skin copy skin weights and open up the options now i'm just going to leave this as closest point on surface because both of the models are pretty much the same and obviously the hands are going to be the same and the head is going to be the same I'm going to leave influence as closest joint, but then influence two, I'm going to set to one to one. And then I'm going to also enable normalize. And this will just 
sort of clamp the values so we don't end up with any rogue weights. And I'm just going to click apply. Close that. So let's hide the original mesh again. So we've now copied those weights across. Now obviously this model is different to the other model so there will be areas that you need to go in and tweak. But the beauty of this is we've pretty much got 99% of that weighting on the new character done. See, we've fixed this issue that we had with the finger before. We can curl these fingers like so. And we've got that weighting information transferred across. Like I said, there's just some small areas that we need to fix. Now the problem with using Maya's tools is you can come up, come across some problems. Now the face looks like it's worked quite well. So we've got that jaw information and the lips have also worked okay too. Although there's a little influence down here. But if we're going to look at the eyes, you see we've got an we've got eyelid joints in here as well to control the eyelids. If I rotate that, now we have eyelashes in here, so I'm just going to get rid of those. So you see. With the eyelid lower before, which we picked before, that worked quite well. Let's just select that again. So that had copied the weights across, but as you can see, the upper light eyelid has been edited as two. This is because these three joints are all in the same space. So when you're copying the weights across, Maya doesn't know which joint it's copying from and copying to. So we're getting a conflict here so it doesn't know which is the upper eyelid which is the lower eyelid and this can happen quite a lot so let's just unbind him again right so we've got rid of those weights now the other option that I tend to use I mean that option is great you know you've got 99% of the weighting done Everything's transferred across and you could just go in, tweak those weights and you don't have to worry about it, you know. But what if you want a lot more control over, say you've got a lot of these characters to do and you want just a little bit more precision when you are transferring the weights across. So let's hide him and let's bring back the main guy again. So this is the main one that's got the weighting information. Now... If you've watched some of my other videos, you've probably heard me talk about NG Skin Tools. And this is the tool that I use pretty much for all my weight painting and skinning and things like that. And what one of the elements I like about this is the ability to export and import the skin weights. Now I know Maya can do this as well, but you get a lot more control using NG Skin Tools. So let's say I want to transfer the weights from this to the other mesh. All I need to do is select the model, initialize the skinning layers. Now with NG Skin Tools, you can paint the weight information on different layers. So you could maybe work on a layer that's the right arm, a layer that's the left arm and things like that. We're not gonna be uh, interested in anything like that for now. You know, we're not looking at any of these tools. All we're gonna do is go to File, Export Layer Weights, and then you can just export all the weighting information to this file here. Now, obviously you give it a name, but I've already um, exported this before. So export those weights, that's done. So let's hide that model and bring back the unskinned model again. And again, I'm just gonna do like I did before. Skin, just give it a really quick bind really rough now what we can do is i can do the same here initialize the skin weights on that model but this time import the weights that i just exported previously and if i just bring this window down so as you can see here we've got a lot more control over which 
uh, influence is going to what other influence. So from the file, it's going to transfer all the weights that were associated with the abdomen joint onto this new um, skinning, uh, basically onto this new skin cluster, and it's going to look for the abdomen joint as well. So essentially, you're treating it like it's copying from one rig and transferring onto a completely different rig. So if the if the joints were called a different name, we could just fix that in this, and it would go, it copy the weights from one joint to another. You've also got these options. So we've got closest point on surface, which is what we used previously. But again, this is a lot more precise because we can go down to where the eyelids are, and like here, where, where was it? There we go. And we can make sure the left eyelid lower joint is going to transfer to the to this new one, so left eyelid lower joint. Now the beauty of this is, yes, closest point on surface, but let's say you've had to make a rig revision and you don't want to lose all your weighting information, you can just export your weights, update your rig, rebind the model, and then you can, re because the model's the same, you can re-import it using Vertex ID and you will get exactly the same weighting information that you had previously. So you don't have to worry about copying weights and things like that and then having to go in and fix things. And you can also copy it using UV space as well, which is really useful. So let's just click done, import those weights. So there we've, we're getting the similar results to when we use the copy skin weights, although it's maybe a little bit more precise in some areas. So as you can see, we've transferred that weighting information across. So let's just check the jaw, that's working fine. So let's have a look at those eyelids again. So eyelid upper, and there, that has copied those weights across perfectly. Let's just find the eyelid lower. So there you go. So that just saves you a lot more work. Well, I say a lot more work, but you'd have to go in and then fix those eyelids manually if you, you're just using Maya's tools. Whereas now, that's done. You can just move on to the next one. And NG Skin Tools is free, so you know it's a bit of a no-brainer, really, just to get those extra weighting tools. So there's a couple of ways of adding a new model to an existing rig and being able to transfer that weighting information across, saving you a lot more work. But what about if your rigs are different sizes and different proportions? Well, let's have a quick look at a way of getting around that. So we now have two different size rigs. Well, I say rigs, again, these are just the skeletons and I've stripped the rigs off just to make the video just a little easier to follow. So basically we have our main base mesh as we did before and he's all skinned and ready to go. But the problem is we need his weights to be on this character down here. And we could move this over and try copy skin weights, although maybe help if I actually bound this to the skin first. So select the root joint, select the model. So joint hierarchy, just as we did before. So that's working. Now the problem we have is if we move this back over here and we say we just want to copy the skin weights. So we select him, select him, skin, copy skin weights. We'll just use these default values again. Copy those across. Let's just hide him for now. Now that hasn't worked because, obviously because the skeletons are different sizes, these uh, joints here are searching around themselves for the closest influence on this model. So obviously if the shoulder couldn't find anything, that's why this area wasn't weighted. So just doing a basic copy skin weights won't work just because these are two different sizes. 
So let's move him back there. Okay, let's look at our other options. So maybe NG skin tools could come to the rescue again. We already exported the weights from this guy. So maybe we could import it onto this one. So let's open this up. Initialize the skinning layers. And I'm just going to import those weights again, which we saved before. So we'll just use closest point on surface because UV space won't work because the UV maps are different on each model and vertex ID won't work because again, the vertex numbers and orders are different on each model. So we import that. Let's have a look. And the same thing has happened. Again, because the weights were exported at this scale, you know, we're getting the same issue where NG Skin Tools is looking up here for the shoulder, whereas he's down here. You know, we could scale him up, but again, that's not going to work either. Let's delete those custom nodes. So if I, let's just select the hierarchy, scale him up. So he's roughly the same size. So this time initialize, import, and do the same again. And again, see, still broken. So it's take hasn't taken into account that scale at all. So let's shrink him back down to normal. So scaling him up and importing the weights with NG skin tools didn't work. But what if we scaled him up and then copied the weights across then? Because Mayer is looking around the shoulder area here for the geometry from this guy and not finding it because it's, it's down here. So what if we move that up to the position of this guy here? So what I've done already is I've added a keyframe. Let's just hide his model for now. I've added a keyframe at frame zero just to store this pose. And then on frame one, I've probably moved him. So I'll just move him back there. But you can see what I'm what I've done. Frame zero is the main pose, and then frame one I've just snapped the joints to the closest joint on the other skeleton. And again, these could be completely different skeletons, so long as the fingers are in the same place, the elbows are in the same place, you know, the torso are in the same place or roughly the same place. This will be fine. And ignore this mesh because that's all deformed because we'd imported those weights before from uh, through NG skin tools. So let's just reset them back to the default weights. So that's better. So he's all stretched because obviously we've scaled him up. So now let's select the main body and then this one and let's try our copy skin weights again. So just use the default options, click apply. So we've seen the model change a little bit there. So now we can go to frame zero and see if that's better than what we were getting before. So yeah, we've got a little bit of an issue under here. And I think we had something similar before. It's because obviously the meshes are different, so it's not going to get the weights absolutely spot on. But just testing these, let's just turn off auto keyframe because we'll end up posing him. Let's have a look around here. So that looks okay. The finger doesn't look too bad either. Now it's going to need a bit of a tidy up. So you see there's a little bit of a conflict under the knee, under the crotch area there. But like I say, it's going to need a little bit of work. You know, it's not worked quite well with the lips there. 
But what we've got there is we've pretty much saved ourselves maybe 75% of the work it would have taken us if we'd have to go through again and repaint all of those, you know, the default weights to get the fingers working, get the arms working and everything, and especially the face. Yeah, it's not spot on, but it's like 75% there. So it has saved you some time. And what I would say is as a general tip, if you have a model like this, that's got a good set of base weights, what I would do is I would strip out the rig and I would put that to one side. And then if you're rigging in future and you want to get a, a jump start on any of your weight painting, use this method, import it, scale it, scale your target skeleton up to this one, copy the weights across. And like I say, then you've got 75% uh, of your work done. And if, if on this guy, say you've got a full rig on him and you don't want to break the rig or damage the rig, delete the rig, keep the skeleton so it's like this, so this is all you've got. Then you can just copy the weights across as I've just shown you. And then you've got the weights there on that skeleton at that scale. So then you can save that as a separate file and then you could maybe use ng skin tools to export that weight map and then that will import nicely onto your full rig or do the way that we showed you before import it into the scene and then just copy the weights across because the skeletons will be the same so you should get a nice weight transfer then so i hope this has been useful to you it's just a few options for copying weights from one mesh to another, either on the same skeleton or on different ones. You know, there are lots of different options out there, but these are a few that I tend to use as I'm rigging. You know, it just saves time in the long run. And, you know, like I say, I'd rather spend a little bit of time doing this and copying the weights across and then having to do a bit of cleanup rather than having to just paint the whole weights all over again. So that's the end of this uh, my uh, quick tip. There's going to be plenty more to come, but like I say, if you have anything in particular that you want me to demonstrate or help you with, get in touch and let me know, and I will uh, put together a video uh, especially for you. As always, don't forget to like the video if you found it useful. Also, subscribe to the channel to keep up to date with future videos. This is Ant CGI signing off, and I will see you on the next one.